मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम पीपल और ऑन्टरप्रन्योर्स आर नॉट पब्लिशिंग कॉन्टेंट लाइक that they feel like how i can create monetization opportunity when uh, to publish the content so like what is your piece of advice what is your suggestion so they learn for monetization opportunity as well how publishing content help to monetization in the monetization ah uh, okay good deal so i am a, a firm subscriber to uh, the frank kern method now the frank kern method says that there are three post types one is connection one is how to and one is offer i kind of blend the three together into one kind of big post and i can give you an example here Welcome to the Entrepreneurs Warrior Show, hosted by me, Nilesh Jain. This is where we interview entrepreneurs, affiliate marketer, coach, consultant, and in this amazing series too. Today we have a very amazing guest with us. He is the content marketer. He run uh, shows. He run. Uh, he is in, interviewed. Uh, he have lots of big people out there, and he is a coach. He is teach how to create content in a way so we monetize it. he he is a content marketer he teach about content strategies and how you can overcome from camera fear how you can build authority with the content creation he teach so all those things so for the delaying let's have jim on the show so hey jim how are you everybody thank you so much for having me yeah i am doing great and it's pleasure it's a super awesome for me to have you on the show how are you oh, i'm excited very well thank you i appreciate you having me on So today we're talking content, huh? Yes, yes, yes. So talking people about getting some attention. One of my yes. favorite topics. Was <laughs> best content marketer ever. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Thank so, you. That's, that's that's massive. Thank you so much. Oh my god. So before we start, are you hear me loud and he clear? Awesome. I can hear so, you. Can you guys hear us out there? Yes. Uh, yeah. Please uh, put hashtag one in the comment if you are hear us loud and clear. And yeah, make sure you put uh, hashtag live and hashtag replay in the comment section as well. Absolutely. So, yeah. Can we proceed further? Can I what? We proceed further with our session. I'm so sorry. It was hard to hear you were there. What, say it one more time. Can we proceed further? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes. Awesome. So, could you tell us a little bit about yourself, um, your backstory, how you got started, and how did you become a video sales guy? Absolutely. So, uh, like so many people, I worked in a day job for about fifteen years and felt like I was just a, a cog in a machine, right? So, I created CGI, which is uh, computer-generated uh, assets, uh, anything that you need for. Commercials for billboard, print ad, web, for automotive industry, for Ford, Tesla, Rivian, uh, Jeep, Ram, so on, so on, so on, for 15 years, and we would make commercials and all sorts of crazy stuff. We did VR, we did AR, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, and like so many others, I'm sure they can relate, is that you feel like you're just a piece of a larger process, and you feel unimportant. So I would put my heart and soul into the, these projects and really invest everything I had into them, and then you hand it off to the next person in the pipeline, and you don't hear about it again for you know three, four months. And when you get an email from somebody you've never met taking a picture with an award for your work, and then they say, "Great job, team!" Winky face, and it's it just feels empty. It feels so empty, and so around this time. I got exposed to like so many others, Russell Brunson. Okay, so that was when I got dot com secrets. I got hooked in from one of his amazing ads, <clears throat> and got exposed into his world and to click funnels and and this whole amazing online entrepreneurship uh, world. Uh, before that, I had tried many things. I had experimented. I've always been someone that tinkers. 
I like to take things apart, not necessarily put them back together, <laughs> but I like to take things apart. You know, I was the kid that wanted to take the VCR apart and see how it worked. So I've always been tinkering with online entrepreneurship and it was always a hobby. Now I wanted to take it to the next level because I wanted to get out of this world that I was in. And I realized that my passion was for entrepreneurs. Like these are my people. These are people that are innovating, creating and creating something out of nothing, out of thin air, just creating uh, value and service and being able to change people's lives. And we can do it with a computer. That's insane. It's nuts. Look at what we're doing right now. This is crazy. You know, not even, you know, 20 years ago, this is crazy. Like what we're doing right now is nuts. So it's it's interesting to, think, to give it that perspective is like how far we've come. Um, so all of this mixed together with uh, the pandemic. OK, so the pandemic hit and I realized this was a very special time, very, very special time in our history and probably one that would never be repeated again in my lifetime. Everyone's locked in their houses and starving for content starving for good content, interesting content, innovative, new content. And so I had that in my mind. And at the same time, all these incredible entrepreneurs, several that have been on your show. Uh, so credit to you, of course, and credit to them for being so generous. But they were giving away things for like 95% off, 98% off. Take it, take it free strategy calls, courses, everything to try and help out people that were negatively affected uh, financially and otherwise by the pandemic. And if you guys are like me, and I'm sure you're, you're very much so, is that if you don't pay, you don't pay attention. So what were people doing with all these free, super cheap things? Nothing. They were letting them collect dust in their Gmail or in their G drive, or if it was a login with a membership site, they never even logged in or they logged in once just to kind of scope it out and then never touched it again. What a shame. What a shame. And I know from personal experience, some of the stuff that was beginning being given away was life changing. So I was at a dilemma. And I, I was thinking of starting a podcast at that time, which I still intend on starting at some point. It's just not a priority currently. Um, I love podcasts. I do. But I didn't think that the pandemic needed another podcast. Um, I enjoy podcasts. I listen to them frequently. I have several favorites. Um, but it was going to be called Fail Faster. And fail faster is just talking about the importance of failure and how it has a negative connotation in our world. And when in actuality, everyone that we see that has all of these incredible wins and successes, it's just the tip of the iceberg that's built on a foundation, a mountain of failure. And the failure is a good thing. You need failure. And I think that it's, it's rough that we get brought up that failure is a bad thing right? Failure is tries. We know what doesn't work, which is huge. That's tremendous. That's great information. That's amazing feedback. But we treat it as, oh, I failed. <sighs> Another failure. You know, and it just drags us down when in actuality it should be sweet. That doesn't work. Next. Easy. What did we learn? All right, cool. Let's put that in the next one. And you just keep rocking, keep going. Because you can't fail if you don't stop, right? So I decided not needed for a pan, uh, for the pandemic. We need something bizarre, weird, off the wall, crazy. I want it to go through your timeline and be like, what was that? So all of this culminating in one thing to where I said, hey, all these things that people are giving away for free and for super cheap, what would happen if they earned it? And that sentence started me on this whole journey, that one sentence. What if, what, what if they earned it? So now how can you earn something online? I go into a deep dive on YouTube, which is a deep dive. Uh, anytime you go into YouTube, just kind of searching around, that's like six hours gone. And <laughs> I discovered uh, old game shows. And I was like, this would be cool. If I could do this live in your Facebook feed, a live game show with entrepreneurs and marketers, I think I might have something there. So 
and did a further deep dive. And I'm trying to find someone that's doing something like what I have in my mind. And I came across Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. So D and D all you D and D fans out there represent. But, uh, so I came across D and D and they're playing live around their center board and they're answering comments from the crowd, from the audience. I'm like, Oh my God, this is it. This is it. I can make this, I can make what I have in my head work with what I'm seeing. Now it's possible. That's all I needed to know. So now I go and I do a deep dive in everyone else's content, see who created the show. I found them. And then I found the terminology I needed to search for because you don't know what you don't know. So now I knew I didn't know. So I had to discover the terms to investigate further into to create what they had created. So now I had that. So now I just ferociously start putting everything together into a game show. I based it off of Hollywood Squares, which is essentially live tic-tac-toe to where instead of the tic-tac-toe letters just being in the squares, you also have celebrities. So my celebrities are entrepreneurs and marketers who have done something to serve and give value back to the community. And I had two contestants that were in a nine to five trying to get into entrepreneurship or in entrepreneurship and trying to replace their job. And so now those nine experts that I had filling out the tic-tac-toe grid would bring prizes for these two contestants to try and get them to that next level. And I was just the guy, the host, along for the ride. And so I put it all together as quickly as I could. And I told my family, like, hey, everyone, friends and family, we're getting on this thing at uh, this time on Friday. They're like, what is that? And I'm like, don't worry about it. You asked too many questions. So everyone's ready to come on a Friday. I'm ferociously trying to get together this game show just as quickly as I can. And Friday rolls around about an hour and a half, two hours before the show. I realized that I can't bring in a Zoom to Streamlabs OBS. At the time, they didn't accept Zoom. So I'm like, oh my goodness, what do I do? So I went to OBS Studio, which is a free uh, software, and I rebuilt the show an hour and a half before we went live <laughs> to be able to do this on the fly. So it was even more shaky than it was before. And so everyone comes on, everyone's like, what is this? I don't know what's going on. So I start doing the trivia and everything, and all the cameras go nuts. Like, I'm now a contestant. One of the experts is the host and just like videos are blown up. Some are very small. Some are off the screen. It's chaos. But we finish up and I'm like, everyone have a good one. Thank you so much. I'm just sitting there. I'm like, oh, my God. What did I do? What have I done? You're an idiot. What did you do? All that negative self-talk is just taking over. And meanwhile, my phone is like vibrating off the table. Now, up until this point, I'm used to maybe getting two messages a week. Maybe, maybe. Like, that's a good week. Like, two messages. We nailed it. Like, tonight, over 30. And all from people saying, I don't know what that was, <laughs> but it was amazing and don't stop. It was so much fun. So I'm like, huh. Okay. Well, maybe there's something here. So, you know, you lick your wounds, you get back up again. And the next night I was like, the next time we're going to do the show, I did it once a week. I go, I'm going to go for a name. I'm going to try and get a big name on here. I reached out to Marley Jacks. It's like, what's the, what am I going to lose? What is there to lose? Nothing. She could have told me no. Then I'm right back where I started. Who cares? So I reach out to her and she is one of the most fantastic people in the world. Like I will forever be thankful to her. Um, but I reached out to her and I go, Hey, Marley, I've got this crazy new show. It's a live game show and it's all about entrepreneurs and marketers. Would you come on? And she goes, well, can you send me an example? <laughs> so I sent her episode one, which was chaos. And she goes, Oh my God, this is so much fun. Yes, I'm in. So then she goes, but can I bring a friend? Yeah, you're Marley Jacks. You can bring anyone you want. And, uh, so it was another big name in the space. So now leverage, I leverage huge and I go up to everybody else and I go, Marley Jackson, this other big name are coming on. Do you want to come on? 
And now I'm getting messages like, what is this show? Why haven't I heard about this show? How'd you get Marley? And I'm like, well, come on the show and find out. So I filled the show in two hours, which each show has 12 people, including me. It's a lot of people to manage and uh, filled the show in two hours. So it was absolutely incredible. And then the, that show happens and everything blew up. Everything went crazy. And at the end, Marley sends me a personalized message and said, oh, my God, that was so much fun. That's the most fun I've had since the pandemic started. Thank you. Don't stop. So I just keep on doing this process of like fix what I know I can fix and keep going and always leverage your last win. So I have next show, I'll go, hey, Marlene Jacks, this person, this person, this person, this person came on. Are you coming on? Fill the show again, fill the show again, and just kept going and kept going. And then it had its own life that formed. And then the experts started hanging out with each other. They formed a messenger chat where it's like this little tight knit family because we all shared an experience together, which is so rare online to share an experience, a genuine, tactile, real experience that we shared together. And now we're like a family. I have these people's personal phone numbers. We chat, we talk, we, we share experiences and, you know, losses and wins. And it's a real relationship that formed and it's so rare online. And that's where all this started it was from the X's nose game show. That's crazy. Like uh, I'm visualizing the, in all the episodes, like how the was the moment like literally crazy the uh, the way you explain and the, I'm really more uh, visualizing like wow super <laughs> that's a really awesome show that you have so uh, and yeah my journey also started with the Russell Brunson dot com secret so literally I'm related with you yeah, at absolutely. that point so absolutely. really awesome so you are also camera confidence coach like so how mm -hmm. people uh, overcome from the fear of camera they have this yes this fear like how to what things you teach them and how they are overcome from the fear of camera sure absolutely and so mind you my first live video ever was episode one of my game show i don't recommend you do that but i'm a person i have to be cornered i have to put myself in a situation where there's no way out do or die that's just my personality type but not everyone's like that you know, so I do have some recommendations to get yourself more confident on camera. And I actually teach this in several groups. And I teach this also in my coaching program as well, because it's I found out it's kind of a big issue in our communities that a lot of people don't want to make these videos because they're terrified. So what do we do? First off is practice. It's really just practice. So you can record a video on your own phone. So we have. We all have this little record button here. So you pop that open, go to video, and we make a video. So we'll do it right now. What's going on, everybody? My name is Jim Beard, and I'm here with the absolutely amazing Nilesh. And we are doing a podcast episode today talking about confidence on camera. Tune in see you soon so i just recorded it on my phone just did i make it go live is anyone else going to see it they don't have to no i you want to get in the reps it's like working out right are you going to go in and just pick up 300 pounds no you're going to go in you're going to get the five pounders and you're going to get moving and then you get to step it up to the 10 pounders and, you know, you work your way up. So there's the same thing with this. So start here. Okay. Record it just to yourself and try and make a habit of doing that daily. Just talking about your day. What's my goal today? What am I doing to achieve it? Just as simple as that. Talking to yourself. Because that's part of it, right? It's weird. This is weird. Talking Thanks. to a little lens. It's weird. So you have to get used to the weird. Okay. So once you get that, get past that part, now you can start thinking about going live to yourself, meaning no one sees it still. It's just for you, but you go through the motions. 
and you kind of get used to that feeling. <clears throat> Next is you can go and do an interview, a short interview with somebody else, much like what we're doing right now, but we can simplify it, okay? Because you and I were just talking. We're just having a conversation. We're just two people who are having a nice conversation. So you can do it in a group, a safe group, safe place that's private, that you know it's not going to get out to the world. And it's a people that want to support you. Okay. I guarantee that this gentleman here would love for you to go live in his group and he would support you to do so and talk about what's on your mind. Talk about what you're doing in your business. I guarantee you he will support you in that and he will he will give you positive feedback and he'll let you know what you can do to maybe make it better and he can let you know um, what steps to take next you know so that's where i would go next i do an interview so when you do an interview what's the structure the structure is um what is your goal uh, what are you working on this week and what are you doing this week to work towards that goal okay there's three questions. That's it. I ask you those three questions. And once you're done, we switch in the same video. We switch. So now you're interviewing me. You ask me those three questions. It's just a conversation. And then after we're done, we let it be. Now you will be nervous. Once you're getting on, you kind of, oh, what are people going to think and all these nervous things? And I'm not big enough. I'm not small enough. I'm, I'm too fat. I'm too skinny. I'm too this. I'm too that. I don't have this. I don't have that. I'm not here yet. But then once you start talking to the other person, it all washes away. And you realize it's just another person who's just like you, who just wants to chat. And once that happens, everything else washes away and you can just enjoy the other person. So I, I truly hope you allow yourself to do that because it's a gift. You know, this, this, this ability we have now is a gift. And what it does is it gets us ready for the next steps. And so you do this as long as you need to until this feels like easy. I can do this in my sleep, no problem. And what's the next step? Now you go live by yourself in that safe group. Talk about what you're up to. Talk about what's on your mind. Do a how-to video. Do a connection post. Do, uh, you know, maybe even an offer trial, like trying out a pitch. Hey, everybody, this is my new pitch. What do you think? I'd love to get your opinion. Don't sell in other people's groups. Get opinions. And make sure that if you're going to do an offer test that you, you contact the owner of the group first to make sure it's okay. That's just basic respect stuff, right? But you can do a how-to post, how to do your first interview. Now you know how to do it. So talk about the very thing that you've just been doing. Hey, this is how to do an interview. Beautiful. Awesome. That is literally crazy advice. That is literally crazy advice. And yeah, people uh, who, because live, doing live is literally give us much more confidence. Uh, if we, right now we are live and people are seeing us, People are uh, commenting with us. And so that is literally help us a lot. And it happens when we started publishing. And that's what I'm also giving them an opportunity for Facebook Live. So, mm -hmm. right. So that is literally super crazy, awesome way to come up with the, to show up ourselves and to build our visibility. That is super awesome. So uh, most of the time people, our entrepreneurs are not publishing content uh, like to, that they feel like how I can create monetization opportunity when uh, to publish the content. So like, what is your piece of advice? What is your suggestion? So they learn for monetization opportunity as well. So you're talking about for publishing content, how to do so? Publishing content is how publishing content help to monetization in the monetization. Ah, uh, Okay, good deal. So I am a, a firm subscriber to uh, the Frank Kern method. Now, the Frank Kern method says that there are three post types. One is connection, one is how to, and one is offer. I kind of blend the three together into one kind of big post. And I can give you an example here. If you allow me to share my screen for a moment. Yes, please, you can. All right, 
so uh, there we go cool share this one go so go ahead and incorporate that there we go so this is my profile okay so something i've been trying lately is to combine those three post types into one now how do you do that so i'm a goofy guy right so i like the weird or the odd that gets you to stop scrolling because what's the first thing you see you see the image of this crazy old lady and then you read let's eat grandma because there's an order of operations right we look at images first then we look at the text and then we see there's there's curiosity here so now that that's selling me to read the first line commas are so insignificant until they aren't ask grandma it's interesting right curiosity for me so now i go into the rest of it and i say one comma can be the difference between your family trying out cannibalism as a new family activity and the other asking your grandma to join you for a nice meal together so still curiosity right i'm selling them to read the rest because before you hit that see more let's see there's no one so like uh here, that see more, you're selling them to click the see more. So there's steps here, right? You see the image. Oh, recognize Alex Hermosi. That's a big name right now. $100 million offers. Big, big fan, by the way. So now that's selling you to read the first line. You have to pay down the time tax of ignorance by Alex Hermosi. Alex Hermosi is a hero of mine. And so hopefully what I've given here is selling you to click the see more. So now I go into my storyline and at the end, there's a CTA. So as an entrepreneur, we're taking each step in the dark and can't see what's in front of us. With a coach or mentor, we can light the next step and have a clear path for what lies ahead. Go, got to avoid those butt kicks and face slaps. Remember, someone else has done exactly what you're doing now and they got past it. Coaches and mentors work, and I highly recommend you get one, whether it's Invisibility Hacking Group, which is our group, or not. They work, period. Then, what do I have in the first comments? I have the link to our group. So that's our CTA. Now, what's the CTA for the Eat the Grandma? <laughs> Don't forget the comma when it comes to your business. That comma is important. Let's eat grandma. Let's eat grandma. So it could mean the difference between becoming the authority in your market and re or remaining hidden. And grandma thanks you too. If you would like to learn more ways to stand out in the noisy marketplace and get your mission message movement seen and heard, I invite you to join the Visibility Hacking Facebook group, link below in comments. So you see there's steps that I'm taking. I'm selling the next step always. Right. So let's take a look at another one. Give you another example. I want to give you guys as much value as I can here. OK, guys, you are getting value, lots of value. I hope so. I really do. I hope so. So this is talking about launches. OK, how we launch our content. We need to launch content just like we launch a product and we launch our pro we don't launch our products with enough of a launch time. So this is talking about that. So I got old Hulk looking like an old man and a bunch of launch stuff for the different movies for MCU. So Hulk just wanted attention all along. So these two are selling you to read the first line. Okay. So now hopefully this has made you go, I'm curious. Let's, let's read what the first line says. Hulk just wanted attention all along. What? The Hulk movie suffered in many ways and we may never get a proper one with the current actor due to legal issues. The launch was almost an afterthought for the movie and because of it, the addressable market possible audience was much smaller hulk mad so hopefully that gets you to click see more yeah i'm see selling more. the next step always so now we get into uh about why it's important to launch with a long launch time and i give you uh tips that movies use to launch their movies to be billion dollar movies this is what they do and so now then I relate that to entrepreneurship and how we can use that. And then at the end, I say, go make your own blockbuster, not the video rental place. It didn't go well for them. <laughs> Should have bought Netflix when they had the chance. 
If you want more strategies like this to get attention to your product, services, brand, mission, or message, I invite you to join the Visibility Hacking Facebook group. Link in the comments where we help you to get visible in your chosen market. So there's psychology at every step. So it's just selling the next step. Right. You don't always. Okay. So it's not just, this is how you do it. Go. I'm introducing connection, how to, and an offer in every post. Okay. So this is just my take on what Frank Kern has taught us. Mm -hmm. And also what Steve Larson teaches us and Peng June, I've mixed a lot of what they've taught me because I've had all these amazing mentors, Marley Jacks as well. Uh, so let's see here. This one. Content creation is a pain in the butt. So if you see this image and you're like, wait, content creation? This looks like a hemorrhoid cream, like infomercial. And then now, why is content creation such a pain in the butt? So I've sold you reading the first line. And hopefully, if I've done my job right, you want to keep reading. So many entrepreneurs and marketers have a really hard time creating content for their business or movement. It doesn't have to be as hard as we make it. So now, hopefully, you're curious enough to click. I'm selling the click. click. I'm not selling the product or service. I'm not selling that. I'm selling just the next, next step. step. Yeah. That's it. So now I personally subscribe to the Ryan Reynolds method, a term I've coined for relating ideas and concepts to the ridiculous. And I do. I use the Ryan Reynolds method all the time. That's what I call it when you use something ridiculous to explain a concept because it stands out in your mind. Ryan Reynolds is an expert at sarcasm. I love Ryan Reynolds. So like he talks about, um, I used to say to Blake, his wife, I would take a bullet for you. I could never love anything as much as I love you. And the second I looked into that baby's eyes, I knew in that exact moment that if we were ever under attack, I would use my wife as a human shield to protect that baby. <laughs> he could have just said, I really love my baby. But because he said it the way he said it, it's mem it's memorable. It sticks. So that's why I use the Ryan Reynolds method, right? Did I have to do pains in the butt and make it look like this? No, I could have just said content creation is hard. But would it have stood out as much in your timeline? No, you probably would have just cruised by it just like that, right? Now, this one, talking about a trend right now about big text, red and black against white. It's very, very popular right now. And I put up pinky in the brain. Pinky in the brain for a lot of people that are of my age and are entrepreneurs, this will relate to them. They'll remember pinky in the brain. Even if they didn't watch it, they know it exists, right? So it's so simple. It just might work, pinky. So that's from the show, right? I'm sure you've noticed this text format for ads recently. It's been gaining traction, but why? It's so simple. So hopefully it attracts you to click see more yeah. to do the next step. Next and step. That's it. You're always thinking about selling the next step. Your eyes go here first. You go to the images first, then you go to text. And if you created enough curiosity here, they will go to the first line. Definitely. And they'll read the first line. Now, if the first line is good enough, they'll read the second line. If the second line is good enough, they'll hit see more. And then after that, you do your content, give amazing value, always give great value they can use right now. And then at the end, you give your CTA. Hey, if you love this and you want to learn more about this kind of stuff, then here's an opportunity to take a step closer to me and allow me to help you. And if not, enjoy the content, have a great day. It's all good either way. And I let people into my personality in the middle. Because I'm sarcastic, I'm goofy, I'm odd. I incorporate all that into my stuff. Why? Because I want to push away people just as much as I want to attract them. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. How many people out there would love to work with their worst case scenario <laughs> client for the rest of your lives? Just the worst clients. Who, who wants to work with those all the time? Show of hands. No? No one? No one. Okay then you want to push them away naturally because if they don't click with your personality, with your mission, with your message, you want to encourage them to go find something else on the internet to mess with. Right. Right. 
Sanjita said that uh, she wants to work with her worst clients forever. I think. <laughs> oh no, that's not good. But next to crazy if, piece of advice. I want to push away the people I don't want to work with, and I want to attract the people that mesh with me, that blend with what I like to do, with with what my mission and my message is. So I make sure that in my content, I give away a lot of my personality, a lot of me. So that way, if you don't like me, awesome. That's fantastic. There is someone else out there for you. And I wish you the best of luck, of course. And I hope you've taken some value from my content that you can use in your life. But we're not a good fit. And that's great. Awesome. But the people that do resonate with this content are my ideal people. And that is incredible. Okay. Now you may find it odd that I'm a video sales guy and I'm doing these kind of posts, static images with copy. Uh, we're doing something called the uh, uh, Team Loud or Get Loud Challenge, which is for 30 days creating content on a daily basis that is a natural magnet to whatever you want your people to see. And I wanted to challenge myself with copywriting because I hate copywriting. It's my weakness. So I wanted to challenge myself for these 30 days to do nothing but copy and imagery. And what's incredibly interesting is this format is working incredibly well to get people into my video world. Very bizarre, very odd, but it works. It really does. And I think the cause for that is because I'm not asking a lot of you here. It's okay. I get it. And then you read, okay, I get it. Cool. Awesome. I got everything I needed within a very short period of time. If it's a video, people go, ah, how long is this video? You know? So you have to earn the right to take up more of someone's time. And I think that this plays into that psychology. I'm saying, listen, this is a very low risk to you because it's a risk. When people read things, they're giving their time, time yeah, and yeah. money. Time and money are of equal value. Or most of the time, your time is of more value because you only get it one time and then it's gone. So I'm asking someone for their time. I want to ask as little of it as possible. So now if they found value in this, I've earned the right to take up a little more of your time. Hopefully that's the idea. So now you check out our group and we have short videos in there. Okay, cool. I can get extra value out of these little videos because I've earned the right to take up a little more time. So what I'm doing, what am I doing? I'm selling the next step always, right? I'm not going, okay, you like that. Here's my 997 product. No, I'm saying I'm selling the next step. Okay. So in everything I do, I'm only selling the very next tangible real step. I'm not selling the thing. You know, if you look at my pinky in the brain post and I left a comment there that was like, buy my new uh, absolutely amazing post generator for, you know, 497, you'd be like, no. And you keep moving along. You'd be like, oh, the post was cool, but no thanks, dude. Why? Because I haven't earned that right yet. Okay. Now, when you become like a Frank Kern, you can do that all day long. You can go right from this to a sale page. But he's also Frank Kern. Frank Kern's been selling things and has gained trust over years and years and years. And he's earned that right. We as entrepreneurs who are not at that level yet haven't earned that right. So we have to sell the very next step. Sorry, we kind of dug into that a little deep. Hopefully that was a value to you guys. Yeah, that is literally a crazy piece of value. Like to sell the next step. Not just to directly 1997 or 997 product. Sell the next step. And uh, you mentioned the right thing like uh, the people who like, they follow your content, and the people who don't like, they just remove. So, this concept also mentioned in the dot com secret as well. Like, uh, so, that is literally a great thing that you share. So, and uh, lots of well, uh, people are commented like, uh, uh, Sangeeta is ready to work with you. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, so content, how to do and wow, offer is super. So, yeah. So what is the biggest mistake you did when you started and what do you suggest to the new people? They also not follow the same mistake. Oh, this is a big one. 
So I make video sales letters for a lot of big personalities in ClickFunnels in particular. And we create shows for big personalities too. And the one thing that I forgot in the beginning and they continue to forget too, and I remind them, is it's not about us. It's not about us. There's no one staying up at night thinking about you. And it, I mean, it stings a little, right? Because it's like, oh man, they're, them, you know, they're my audience. They love me. No, they're not taking time in their day to think about you in general. Okay. They're just not. So we have to talk about them. So many VSLs, what do they start out with? This is our new program and it's going to help you to do this, 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 and this. No one cares. No one cares. Meet them where they are. Meet them in their pain. What pain are you going to help them with? So how do we treat that instead? A proper way to treat that is, listen, I was where you were. Where you are right now, I was there. I was living check to check. I was doing A, B, C, D, and E, like I'm sure you are now. And I felt like there was no other answer. I felt like there was no solution. There was all these fake gurus out there, and they were just trying to take my money. And I felt like that was helpless. I'm sure you felt like that too. And I was just trying to seek an answer. I just wanted to support my family. I wanted to have a way out of the rat race. And if you're like me, then I'm sure that you were sitting there and just feeling like there's no other way. But I had someone come into my life or I had this come into my life or I discovered this thing that changed everything for me. And today I want to help you with that as well. So what's the difference there? One is you're meeting someone at an emotional level. You're meeting them where they are. The other is you're saying, I got a new widget. It's going to help you. Look at it. It's got, it's got three lenses. It's black. It's shiny. And you're going to love it. So click the link below. Bye. Huge difference. We buy emotionally and then we rationalize logically. So we buy on emotion because we're excited. They tapped into something. They've got us to feel something. And then we rationalize logically. Oh, well, it, I mean, it does have those three lenses and it's got a nice case on it. That's all logical the rationale to back up an emotional decision that we made. Emotionally, we say, oh, pff, I need the newest one because of this, this, and this, and it's going to help me to do all these amazing things. It's going to be so cool. And I'm going to feel better by owning it. And then we rationalize it logically. That's why there's a three-day rescission period on big purchases, right? What's a rescission period? It's a period of time where you can say, you know what? I don't actually want it. Why is that? Because we logically after the purchase we go into kind of a fight or flight mode oh no what did i do was that a good decision um i don't think i really had the money for that um you know you start kind of freaking out so that's why it's important in fulfillment for onboarding right is to reaffirm someone's decision hey we're so happy to have you aboard and we know you made the right choice and we can't wait to help you get this result that you have paid for and we're going to be here to support you the entire way. What is that doing? It's soothing. It's saying it's okay. You made the right choice. Don't worry. You're in good hands, right? Now, what happens if you don't have that? If you don't have that, people go, oh, my God, uh, I'm going to call. I, I can't do this. I don't think this is a good choice for me. Um, I just, I, I would like for my refund. I'd like my money back. Thank you. I, I, I'm just sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. It's not, it's not a good time. We buy emotionally and we rationalize logically. So, so to, like this is literally crazy. We buy emotionally. Like uh, we have to share like where I was at a year ago or my at initial days of my journey. I am at your place, and that is where they connect. They feel connection. Super. So, guys, we are here for a few more minutes. So, if you have a question, you can put in the comment section. So, you also have this amazing group. Uh, can you mm -hmm. share uh, about it? So visibility hackers is what obviously all my posts are talking about. And it's something that's very passionate to me. I'm very passionate about it is how do we become visible in a noisy market? We're exposed to thousands of sales messages a day. How do we break through the noise 
so we can get in front of our ideal customers and genuinely help people. You know, they say if you have the cure for cancer, but you're screaming it in the middle of a forest, does it matter? Yeah. That's tough to hear, right? I have the cure for cancer. But if no one knows about it, does it matter? No. So what do we do? We help you to get attention. We help you to get people's eyeballs on your mission, your message, and your movement. So that way you can help people. Even if you have no audience, if no one's ever heard of you, if you're coming out of the forest since you've been born, you were born out in the forest and you have no fans, no one knows you exist and someone hands you a computer, you can have fans generated in a very short period of time. Get attention onto your mission and your message. And that's what it's all about. So that's what we talk about in the visibility hacking movement inside the Facebook group. And that's what we teach. Super, super. So that's, uh, I put the link in the comment section. So you can join his group to, if you wanted to get more visibility and also before we end the show, can you share a few, uh, like the people who started their journey and they feel to give up, uh, what is your fine, uh, thoughts on them to all the people who feel to give up or they lose the momentum? People that fear of giving up and then they're losing momentum. Yeah. Go out and help somebody for free, literally for free. If you're feeling down, you're feeling like, oh, man, this the world's against me. I feel like I can't get to that next level. Just go out and help one person. Go out and click funnel. See who's saying, I need help. I need help with this. I need help with that. Go in the Avengers group. Go into other groups you're in and say, listen, today and today only, I am doing, um, you know, open zoom call for these hours if you need help on these topics come on in and i want to help you only thing i ask in return is a testimonial at the end 30 seconds now what does this do it reaffirms that you know your stuff that you're the expert you can help somebody and it also lets other people know about your authority that you know what you're talking about and lets them know that you're giving of your time. It's not just about a transaction. It's about a relationship. Relationships make the world go round. So if you're not starting a business transaction with a relationship first, it's, it's not long lasting. That's not a relationship that's going to last. It's literally a transaction, a receipt, and, and that's not good business. Super, super. We have one question in the comment section. Mm -hmm. Which type of content we should post more, video or written? I mean, really, it's a mix. Uh, for me, right now, my current cadence or frequency, like how often I post, is I post um, four or five days with the kind of content I've been showing, the image and the copy to join the group. And then I do one live video a week. And it's working pretty well. And I'm bringing back my game show too. So it'll be two live videos a week. And then the five days of copy uh, and images, excuse me. That's what works for me. How did I arrive at that? Testing. It's all testing. I, and even like the time of day I, I post, I'm testing. So like one day I'll post at 1 p.m. on a Wednesday. The next Wednesday I'll post at 2 p.m. The next Wednesday, I'll post at 3 p.m. And what am I doing? I'm seeing, oh, Wednesday at 2 p.m. got lit up. So that's now my posting time for Wednesday. Would I have known that without testing? No. I have to give myself permission to test. There's no such thing as post it and they will come. Content creation is a long game. Okay. And it's, it's constant testing. It never, ever stops. You have to get into a testing mindset and allow yourself permission to try things. So just but record too. like I have a, an Excel doc of when what time I posted, what I posted, the link to it, and then uh, what kind of engagement it got within a week. And I try to keep tabs on that. Sometimes it's hard because you get deep with the content. It's hard to go back and say, oh, did that ever get any further? Sometimes I forget, but the data I'm gathering is valuable. So now I know like, oh, Wednesday at 1 p.m., that's the way to go. That's the time of day for Wednesdays for me. 
I'm going to stay there for a while. And then maybe the engagement goes lower because things are changing. People's lives are changing. People are starting to go back to work now. So do I stay at Wednesday at one, even though my engagement is lowering? No, I try. I go, oh, start the process all over again. Let's try Wednesday at two, Wednesday at three, Wednesday at four and see what happens. I test. So give yourself permission to test. Testing is, is important. Like uh, that is literally amazing, amazing golden nugget. Mic drop session with the gym, literally crazy stuff. Guys, uh, that is super awesome session. And I'm so grateful, Jim, that you share lots of value, lots of golden nugget with my audience. So till then, have a great rest of the day. I'll be joining you in a minute. Thank you so much for awesome. joining. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really, truly appreciate it. I respect your time. So thank you for thank spending you. it here with us. And thank you so much thank for having me on the show. It's my pleasure. Bye-bye. I'll guys. join you. So there you go, guys. There you go. Like, this is literally crazy piece of advice that shared by Jim. So, so many golden nuggets that you are going, if you go and implement, that literally help you a lot. So thank you, Daniel, Dhananjay, Wasim, Nirmal, Muhammad, Pratik, Sangeeta. So many people are with me on live. So thank you so much for all of you for with me on live till the end. So yeah, a quick announcement, like uh, on the 28th March, uh, the Facebook Live Day challenge has started. So if you wanted to start your Facebook Live journey, you wanted to be do like live like this and go, go show yourself in front of cameras and in front of your target audience, you can book your seat here, start from 28th of March. So you can join the five days challenge. I put all the link in the comment section. Till then, Nilesh and signing off. Have a great rest of the day. I'll be back with another interview on my show. Bye-bye.